right, we're live. Oh no. The terror yeah, begins. I know. It's uh you really uh you really should just go elsewhere because we're just gonna let you down and it's gonna be a creepy kind of you know stream. It, it just is. It's just it, we will let you down things that are we will give you up. <laughs> we will hurt you. <laughs> Yeah, I promise none of those things. But hey, hey, we are playing some uh, some Link Mar, some DCC Link Mar tonight. Uh, we ended uh, near the end of uh, the No Small Crimes module, which is module mm -hmm. zero in the setting. So we're going to finish that off tonight. And we're going to do the, uh, the downtime charts again, and then we will roll into the next module. Now, at least that's that's the plan. But we'll see how it goes. So uh, before we get started, Chuck, you got any uh, preamble? You got any pre-roll you want to do there? Uh, no, I'm playing <clears throat> Courage. I hit things. There you go. That that works. Jeremy, how about you? Who are you playing tonight? We're playing uh, Montgomery, the Baker Basher of Beat Street. <laughs> Another person that beats things. Yeah. yeah. yeah there, there's that. But I beat uh, bread. I don't beat my meat. Yeah, yeah. And mm, those are playing words. ugly tonight is <laughs> uh Jake for the Defenders of Cobalt. Uh, I am playing Kenneth Lee, aka Ugly, because he was a failed gambler with a, an unhandsome face. He is now a warrior with a a, a less than agile, a less than uh sturdy frame. But he is lucky. Mm. Oh no. And uh, playing the character that in no way resembles Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> that would be me, uh, Rawl Poobins. Uh, he's, he's a weird guy. He uh, got a very distinct voice and laugh, I should say. Um, but he just, he just likes to have fun, really. Um, even if that fun is perhaps in the jaws of danger. Or in darkened movie theaters. And uh, <laughs> Dan... <laughs> Before he dies in the end, who will you be playing? I may be dying sooner. Uh, I'm Dan with the uh, absolutely fucked computer. Hey, PG-13. I'm getting that curse word just out of the way, right okay. out of the gate. Uh, I can't get in to change my background to match everyone else because Zoom is doing its thing. But I'm Steve, the guy... Yes. Technically a trapper uh, and nothing else, really. I mean, let's be real. And next time you badmouth China, you just remember what Zoom will do to you. You just remember. Zoom do what it do to me <laughs> all the time. All right. So um, your characters. Uh, I can't. I can't even open it up. <laughs> when we started this uh, shenanigans last time, the first thing we did was roll on the carousing table, and some of you are under the effects of what went on with that table. So just to remind everyone, Jeremy, your character cannot harm a living being. That's totally cool. That's no problem. Yeah, yeah. Daniel, uh, Mr. Average is average, and nothing special is happening to Daniel. Daniel's character, anyway. Uh, Jake found out that he cannot fail a saving throw or a luck check as uh, he attracted some attention uh, from the deities. They apparently enjoy watching his shenanigans and eat popcorn and just make sure he stays alive. Eddie started with a massive hangover and broke. Every coin to his name was uh, either extorted, robbed, or lost at a wagering table, but he did come away with a uh, contract the lease uh, not lease but the uh, uh what deed. Call it? the deed to a fabulous uh townhouse in a not so bad quarter of Lincomar. that's that's how we got to the adventure location uh, welcome Joe, to is, casa de pubins yes yes be careful how you pronounce that uh joe who is not here <laughs> with us tonight uh his brother came into town and quickly got snatched up by the thieves guild and uh, Joe's character needs to bring back a ransom of 149 gold before midnight tonight, or they execute his brother. Guess his brother's out of luck. <laughs> and... uh, Chuck carousing with a rival's gal. Yeah. As long as you keep her happy, she won't do bad things to your reputation or body. <laughs> 
Okay. okay yeah, right. yeah. So that is what everyone uh, has going forward into this adventure. And then last time, let's see here. Uh, well, you got shrank to a very diminutive size. You mm -hmm. are exploring, after you found out, the prior wizard's residence, uh, who's left behind a whole bunch of little nasty, nasty little traps, including his house cat, uh, who you cleverly were able to lock in a room uh, with some humanish sized rat men. The important thing was Jeremy <laughs> raged against the machine. Yes, Jeremy, oh, absolutely. It was you fantastic. found the mage's uh, alchemical laboratory with his construct. Uh, Jeremy was able to get up in there and cause all kinds of damage. Yeah. Eventually being ejected out of the bolt hole in the uh, rear end of the construct. <laughs> and some of you uh, are now back to regular size after taking some potions and... Uh, well, being rebuilt by the, the matter at hand, which in case of all of you is bits of countertop, retorts, glass, uh, some really chemicals that you probably didn't want to have incorporated into your bodies, Mr. Poobin. <laughs> I mean, Jeremy's the right. <laughs> right. Uh, so we're ending, if you're on the map there, guys, in room three, two, after destroying that construct. Um who is normal size now and who is not? I'm, I'm normal sized with accessories. Yeah. I don't remember if I was normal sized or not. I knew I was up there and I knew I took ocean. Do you have any uh, const uh, constitution damage marked down? Uh, no, I don't have any stamina hurt. Stamina I'm, damage, yes. It, yes sorry. Maybe I was getting ready to turn big. Yeah, so if you don't have any stamina damage written down, then you didn't take the potion because uh, that's part of it. Okay. <clears throat> having I have uh, stamina damage. Ha having pieces of countertop incorporated into your new mass uh, causes all kinds of havoc with your system. So we'll pick it up there, guys. Uh, mm -hmm. We will say Joe's character is around, but uh, really not uh, mm -hmm. offering any insight into tonight's mm -hmm. mission. Okay. All right. He was so a slacker, anyways. Yeah. I remember there being a small door in this room with the man-sized metal man. Mm -hmm. And I, still being small, would like to check out that small door. That's not a bad idea. <clears throat> I'll go with you, just in case. In case there's another man-sized metal man. And kill that yeah. one, too. Take it from both sides. <laughs> Get all up in his guts. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, well, the tiny bar, uh, tiny door uh, being about your size and this, uh, it's uh, the chimney, it, well, it used to be a chimney, has been bricked up, uh, walled over, and the little tiny door uh, looks like it's now incorporated into that chimney. It is, however, locked. Hmm. Greatest weakness, doors. Well, I suppose I've got a stick. I suppose I'll just hit the door and try to uh, open it forcefully. Okay. I'll lean a shoulder into it if you like. Sure. Absolutely. Um, why don't you both uh, go ahead and roll me strength checks? DC 20 is what I'm looking for. Oh, man. No. Killing me here. Sorry, sorry, I wanted to help you, but... <laughs> yep. Uh, well, you both can uh, roll it if you're both trying to bash down the door. Uh, neither of us made it. Neither of you made it. Uh, okay, there I go. I see him now. Okay, yeah, it was close. You don't want to spend any luck? Make that 19 to 20? Uh, you know what? Since I'm... Well, hmm. I don't... Let me check my notes. Do I recover luck? points that's uh... with carousing yeah you oh okay all, in that case yeah it's covered with carousing yeah yeah i'll spend a luck then okay uh yeah so you made it at anyway. 20 so uh so what's going on here is uh mr moorcock of course softened that door and uh you finished it off uh 
shouldering through it as it breaks and you enter in. And this is like a, a very minuscule uh, crawl space uh, between the bricked up fireplace and it's got a stairwell, miniaturized stairwell, uh, leading down, 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 down. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They're very tiny stairs here, although they're, they're, as far as I'm concerned, they're my sized. They're heading down. Uh, do you think there might be anything worth stealing down there? Of course. We should probably let the others know before we go. Yes, or sir, we could sir. just do it now. <laughs> yeah, be right back. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are the rest of you guys doing then? Uh, well, I was up on the table, I think, with mm -hmm. one of the vials. You uh, want to go ahead and take that vial now? Yeah, because I don't think Joe's character told us his revelation. He didn't tell you the plan. No. Nope. All right. Well, I'm just going to climb down off the table so I don't crush mm -hmm. it when I get big. Uh, and then down the hatch. Down the hatch. Okay. Uh, sorry. Let me get to that section again. Um... There we go. Going tall again. Um, okay, yeah. So uh, you start expanding out while you create like a miniature black hole around you that starts sucking in material. Yeah. Uh, roll a d4. And that's how much temporary stamina damage you take. Uh, only a point. Only a One point. good night's sleep. You'll be just fine. One's okay. Mm -hmm. So now uh, everyone in this room is back to normal size. And you do see a door, a uh, full-size door over here in the corner as well. Your miniaturized friends, uh, you know, are, just seem to have abandoned you, saying they'll be back in a bit. Well, while they're going down there, I guess while I'm big, I'll go check out that door. Hmm. All right. So the door is made to be locked and barred from this side, so it's fairly easy to open up. Uh, going into this next room, 3-3 three, three there. Right up here? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So it goes up into this room here. Uh, it contains a bricked up hearth and chimney, just like the, uh, the laboratory room behind you. Uh, the floor is broad and dusty. It doesn't look like anyone's tracked across here. You don't see footprints or anything like that. Things are covered in cobwebs. There's a brass cage uh, containing small... Uh, things in them. You're not quite sure from the doorway what exactly they are. I'll go check it out. All right. Come into the room, yeah. check it out. So it's got two, uh, actually four minuscule figures in it. Two of them are upright and standing and look suspiciously like Mr. Moorcock and Ugly. The other two are kind of sprawled on the ground, uh, looking very dead, very corpse-like. Oh, and these no. are miniatures, little figurines. Uh, does the cage open? Yes, it does. I'll pop the cage open. I want to take out the two dead ones. Okay. And I want to inspect them because we found that dead dude downstairs with the spiders. Yeah. Does he resemble that uh well he was mostly uh bones uh and had been yeah so it's hard to tell but when you pull the figurine out of the cage uh it kind of just turns to dust in your hand just fades away okay okay okay, uh, okay. from down below uh you hear uh a little clattering not sure if it's linked or not and they went in that small moorcock and uh, going into that small door in the chimney. Yep. I will not take them out. <laughs> Come on, Chuck. <laughs> not a snack. <laughs> that would be, why is there blood just spraying out of this little hole in the <laughs> chimney? It would be a fantastic character death. I will, uh, I'll walk up to see what he's doing. And as he's inspecting this cage and the, and the figures inside, I'll just kind of, tap the side of the cage, looking at the tiny figures. Hey, look, it looks like them. 
just kind of poke at it, shake it a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think if we take these out of the cage, we will kill them. Hmm. So I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of walk around looking at other things in the room. What else do I find in the room? Uh, what's your class? Are you a thief? Yes. You're a thief. Okay. Uh, good enough. I tell you what. Why don't you make... As you're examining things, going over and looking at things here. Um, give me just a second. Why don't you make me an intelligence check? Nineteen. Nice. So uh, you're looking around, and the floor is covered in cobwebs, covered in dust. Nothing has been through here in a while, not unless it flew. Uh, the ceilings of here are normal height, so if it flew, it was small. But you've got a, you scratch your head a little bit, and you're not quite, there's something wrong with the room. And you're not exactly what it is at first. You go back to the other room, you pop your head out the steel door, you look around, then you pace off the laboratory room. And uh, it dawns on you that the room with the cage in it uh, it's a good five feet shorter than it should be. Hmm. And of course, the players can see the big old S secret door on the map, <laughs> but let's just pretend you don't. <laughs> I can I determine it from? Have a, can I determine in which direction it's shorter than it oh, should absolutely. be? Oh, uh, absolutely. So like I was saying, you, you poke your head out of the steel door right here. So you know that the wall of that room should go all the way down, just like uh, the room of the alchemist lab does. So yeah, it's got to be the last five feet of that room. Okay. So when I go back into that room, I'll just kind of be uh, following along that wall, just kind of pressing the entirety of my body against it, just kind of... Okay. Just kind of trying to rub it and see if I, I don't know, notice yeah. it's uh, You eventually are spot. able to find very, very minuscule crack that runs along the bricks, uh, and you're pushing against it, kind of rubbing yourself against it, and you do trip it. Um, the door kind of slides open, and this is, uh, it's, it's a not very deep room, definitely hidden here. And um, in the room, sorry, let me get to it here. There is a very large, like a steeper trunk almost, you know, a large chest. Hmm, treasure. It's got a very large iron lock on it as well. It's all banded in, in steel and metal. It's very well made. I will alert uh, Kurd, Kurd that I have found treasure. I like the sound of that. Why don't you pop that lock off and we'll see what we got. I didn't even remember if I have any kind of an implement. What is there anything in the room I could use to try and pry or, or beat this lock? Uh, hammer. Yeah, I mean, back in the alchemist room, there are all kinds of little bitty tools. Small hammer you can find easily enough. You want okay. to try and just beat the lock off? Um. Well, I mean, I'll look around to see if there was a key in the other room first. Okay, uh, you don't find any keys. Although, mm. it could have been sucked into one of you guys as you were growing. Uh, but a lot of those tables are just gone now. That's true. I do, I should have... Um, if I have all of my equipment, I should have a set of lock picks mm -hmm. that were on my person. I might try those before I try beating it. Sure. Go ahead and make a pick lock check. Uh, oh, I don't think my character sheet ever got updated. Oh, I thought it did. Oh, so that's right. I was waiting for you to say that you had transferred the data over so that I didn't kill your sheet. Uh, oh, but right. it's just an agility check. Okay. Da, 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 da. Uh, so remind me, and I'll I'll do it after. Yeah, and we had the uh, last time we talked, we had the uh, chart, didn't we? Mm -hmm. What kind of thief are you based on? Uh, I am an assassin, uh, yeah. and I believe I was chaotic. I don't know that that makes a difference for us, but 
Yeah, so I think that's it's a plus one. Plus one. Yep. Yeah. All right. So let's go agility. So that's an eleven. Okay. Uh not quite. It's complicated lock. You're not able to get it just right. You know, and you might have felt like you wanted to pick it because it's a very nice lock, very nice chest. It's probably got some value in its own, but looks like you're gonna have to go the hard way. Hammer it is. Unless you want to spend some luck. Ooh. Ooh. I could spend some luck. Yeah, I'll I'll spend some luck. All right. How much? Um let's see, if I remember right, luck actually allows me to roll a die for it, correct? It's not just a straight one to one. Right. Uh, I'll spend Two luck. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me 2d4s. So that'll be a 16 now. All right. Not a problem. Uh, you're able to save the lock. You're able to pick it. Uh, inside, there are several small bags filled with silver, some gold, uh, uncut gems, a uh, mm -hmm. set of ivory dice. Ooh, look at all the treasure. Nice. Mm -hmm. Also wrapped in some cloth at the very bottom is a, a tome, a personal grimoire. You expect that these letters that are swimming around on the page denotes that they, it's a magical textbook. You might want to hand that off to one of your friends that can deal with that, but there you go. Starbuck! Yeah, so this is the treasure chamber. So inside the little tunnel, the diminutive tunnel, you guys are going down the stairway uh, and you start smelling the smells, uh, probably familiar to you guys now, uh, the smell of the Linkmar sewers. Seems like ah, this leads gross. down into Linkmar beneath, uh, which is, yeah, you know, uh, it's another thieves highway of sorts. Uh, rooftops and sewers, uh, prime ways for thieves to get around this very large city. But there are also things down here that not so comfortable if they catch up to you. Uh, more so in your now diminutive size, you guys hear a <laughs> you hear it. Did I hear the sound of prowling. almost profit in the distance? <laughs> <laughs> so Is that below treasure you, gleaming in the darkness? <laughs> you hear the uh, raspy cough of a of a cat that's got an upper respiratory thing going on and sniffing the air trying to decide if uh, what it smells is uh, food or something to fear. Well, well, Monty, uh, I'm going back upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Bravely retreating. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll back slowly, making sure that the back's not turned to the cat. Yeah, it's somewhere below you. Um, yeah. If the cat is the same size as the one you trapped in the room. Uh, it couldn't get up the stairwell, but if you go further down, you kind of get the feeling that it widens out a bit. I don't Is trust this... it. I've, I've seen how cat arms can stretch beyond <laughs> yeah, how far just... they should be able to. Now, is this while we're shrank or is this normal size us? No, this is the, sh the two that are in the tunnel uh, all shr uh, shrunk down. Well, we're shrunk down too, though, right? Uh, now, I think you, Chuck, and I all got Yeah, you're big. all full-sized. Yeah. yeah. So you guys are in room 3-3, three, three, and Ugly and Moorcock are down behind that little small door. Yeah, I'll square up with an automaton, but not a cat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you guys bravely back out through the small door. You notice that uh, your friends have gone off to the next room, leaving the door open there. Mm. Yeah, and you hear... Uh, Mr. Pubins yell out an exclamation. Treasure! <laughs> oh, okay. See, he knows what's up. All right, yeah. Uh, Ten minutes later, we make our way across the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stretch out <laughs> my hammies slow. and then just sprint. <laughs> <laughs> when you're that size, it, it's a rather slow slog. Uh, you know, just as you're going up the stairwell, you know, a furry paw comes up that tunnel and starts slapping around. <laughs> Got out <laughs> just in time. Okay, uh, you're all in 3-3 three, three now. 
as soon right. as I see tiny them, mm -hmm. I'm going to run over to that cage <laughs> and I'm going to take out mm, Ugg. All right. Uh, you pull out Ugg's little mannequin. And as it comes out, it turns to dust in your hand. And oh, you start growing back. Uh, you don't have the same vortex effect where you're pulling in material. You just return to your normal size just over the course of a minute. It's gentle. Nice. <laughs> that's, that's lovely. How do you guys yeah. do that? Uh, all right. Now that I know that Ugg didn't die, I'll grab Montgomery's <laughs> as well. <laughs> Oh, oh man, that's... I love that it was 50 50. It's like, yeah. what a way to find out. <laughs> mm. okay. uh, so, you guys have found the treasure chamber. You're back to your normal size. That house cat should pose no problems to you now. Uh, so, your new clubhouse has a couple of negatives. A couple of negatives. Mm. Um, you still have to figure out like what triggers that shrinking effect. And uh, you've got some, you know, small human like rats that apparently have gotten in here from somewhere mm -hmm. That's... maybe we could employ them as some sort of guards for that tunnel <laughs> so we screwed that up staircase we screwed up, or we screwed up and we didn't screw up mm. well uh i mean i'm not the, the wizardly thinking one but did we find anything <laughs> in that treasure chest Oh, yeah. I pull out the book and I go, it's a magic storybook. Oh, God. That's... <laughs> How many pictures are in that book? Zero. No, no. They're all <laughs> swirly. No pictures. Aww. Lots of stars and moons and vivisected bodies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, my. You know, we could leave a note and an offering to the rat people to see if we can make peace with them if we're going to be staying here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe. Get, some, get some cheese oh. and the like. I mean, there could be good cheese on the line for this. And I guess one of us can go downstairs, go outside, and then come back in to see if the trap springs again. Maybe we broke it somehow by doing something we've done. Who goes to check on the cat and the rat people, and who goes outside to check on that then? If that's the question, I'll try the tap the trap. I'll check on the cat. All right. <laughs> so the true, the two proven bravest amongst you go about doing this. All right. To make it short, uh, Mr. Moorcock, as soon as you step outside, everything is fine. As soon as you step back in, all of you hear the voice of the wizard reverberating again. And you <laughs> shriek down uh, to a minuscule little you, and a figurine <laughs> shows up inside of that birdcage. Just pull the figure right out. Yeah. There you go. Uh, we'll you give him the a door. Solid. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, you open the door. A very satisfied cat comes out. You just, you know, you interrupt mm -hmm. the cat just as it's slurping down, like the, the, the last of the feet of one of the mice men. You see in the corner, one of the mice men, and it's uh, gotten behind uh, like a little glass jar and is cowering behind it as you let the cat out. The cat just kind of twines between your legs, rubbing it up against you, purring as it slurps down the feet of the last uh, mouse man that it caught. Maybe we hire the cat to protect stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can we Details. make the cat big? <laughs> yeah, there you go. That would be the best. Battle cat. <laughs> you know, we could really defuse this cat situation by taking it outside and then tossing it back in through the door. <laughs> Even terms. Yes. I'm getting that a solid like eh out of eh. Hmm. It could work. Pocket cat. <laughs> if you try that, uh the cat doesn't trigger the spell. It actually just wanders back in just fine. Interesting. Cats just go wherever they want, whenever they want, and everything's cat fine doing for them. cat things is what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we yeah. should check uh, uh, another door in the house and see if there's another entryway into well, the house. There's still one of them there rat a... dudes? Yeah. He's cowering yeah. behind a little glass uh, jar that he's got mm. protection behind. You know, that was the idea that we had with the cat. He was smart thinking there. Master rat chief. <laughs> <laughs> the rat looks around. It's like, is it gone? 
Is the Great Devourer gone? I uh, no. Yeah. No. I mean, it's not like dead or anything, <laughs> but yeah, it's just not here. <laughs> no. No achievements here. <laughs> Still cowering. No increased out gamer slowly. score. How much do you understand about this house? I don't know. I understand a bit. We used to have dealings with the mage that once resided here before he passed along. Are you the new residence? Well, I mean, uh, one of us is. I guess we. I guess we could all live here. Sure. I, um, but the whole magic spell thing or coming in and out, that's got to go. Uh, or at least it needs to be more discerning. Yeah. Well, a treaty then. Maybe we can deal. I know the magics of this place and how to diffuse them. I've seen the old mage do it more than once. Neat. So, uh, we'll bring you cheese, um, I'll look to the others. Drown the cat? Do we drown the cat? Is that part of the deal? Is I'm good with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cat yeah, from yeah, no the house. This is... <laughs> I mean, maybe we just shoot it? Just You guys You guys just hear me running at full speed down the hallway. Kitty! 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 <laughs> yeah, he's got it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, sign cat a we'll get you some cheese. Uh, we'll take care of the cat and you help us out with the house. Uh, it'll take more than just the cheese. How about We're cat getting pie? Rid of the cat too. Yeah, cat pie. Cheese. I mean, why do you want more than cat and cheese? Uh, we had a treaty with the master of this place. We have a great, vast underground empire. Who? That is in need of better food. Who? B -b better food. I mean, Who? cheese is a start. Who? Oh, so <laughs> great underground <laughs> empire. All right. Like, so you want us try quiche. to bring you better food? You want sliced cheese? That's what I'm hearing. I mean, get, get, oh no, it's the cat. <laughs> confectionaries. Oh, oh no, cat. breads. Oh no, cat. Oh, oh, you know, the roller finest too. baker you will ever meet. <laughs> that is true. My memory's pretty good. Yeah. In return, we can provide you services. We have access the to the houses and the quarters. The we learn things. We hear things. Sounds like mm. we're going to be fast friends. Yeah. The Secret the spy mice. Man, Brad. Great. He uh, takes his little sword and he stabs his hand. A blood oath then! We'll seal the deal! Uh, Raul, this is all you. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just hear somebody rolling and screaming in the hallway and a cat probably like screaming as well. Yeah, you and the cat are uh, locked in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I am somewhat indisposed. Right now, I'll be right back. <laughs> You got claw marks on your face. <laughs> yeah. I'll just kind of wipe some of the blood from a claw mark on my face on my finger and hold it out to shake his little tiny paw. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that works. All right. The deed is done. Take the bird's confinement device. Put it outside the home. Leave it there. Oh, ah, that makes do, a lot of the sense. Do, the do what with who? The cage. Yeah. I'll go grab the cage, cage and put this it one outside. Too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll consider hey. it. Yeah, no. I'll go grab the cage and just yeet Don't it out the me. door. All right. Uh, you yeet it out the door. There's nothing specific that happens, but if somebody wanders out and comes back in, doesn't trigger anything. Everything seems fine. So Ooh. I'll then take the cage and put it back inside uh -huh. and then walk out and back in. Yeah, so once you put the cage back in the house, it seems to trigger everything again. Oh, that's fantastic, okay. guys. So now we know how to how to change it. Yeah. If we yeah. if we leave the house, maybe we can mm -hmm. put it in the house. Set the cage inside. And then when we come back, we 
Well, but when we come back, we have to take <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. This well, is if complicated. we set the cage <laughs> by the door, we can That's just true. drag our little figure out. That's true, but so could anybody else if they figure it out. What we do is we put a secret door, uh, like up, like on the upper corner of the door frame that just kind of swivels around like a fake bookcase. Oh, there we go. So whenever we leave, we just swing it around to the cage. Anyway, we know the secret now, so we can... Yeah, we'll figure something out. Yeah. Yeah, we, we got it. Mm. We have a magic house. This is we great. Got a magic house? Yeah. Well, cool. I mean, one of us does. All right, so I, uh, I yeah. put a document in the link mark folder for party notes. If somebody wants to write down, this is your loot. This is your nest egg. This is what your, your band of adventurers is going to have to work with. Uh, to decide how you're going to make your fortunes in Lankmar. Uh, did you Got set it? the permissions on that? Yes. I gave all players ownership. Oh, party notes. I see it. Okay. So uh, you have 1,236 silver smurdukes, or just silver pieces. 376 gold rilks, gold pieces. I'll handle that business with joe's yep. brother uh 10 uncut gems which you will need to find a merchant or uh has anybody got a background as a businessman an appraiser a gem cutter anything like that no no yeah. okay i'll tell you what why don't all of you uh do an uh do a d10 intelligence check then since none of you have the right class but if somebody rolls a 10 Um, I'll tell you what, I'll burn five luck. Ooh, Eddie got it. Oh, damn. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Of course uh, you so, would. yeah, whether you You're share You're smarter with than you not, think I am. The, uh, the, the gem, the uncut gems are probably worth about 20 gold uh, rilks in their current form a piece, which is quite a bit of money. Remember, most people don't see gold that often. Mm -hmm. Um if you could actually find a gem cutter, it'd be worth a lot more in its finished refined form. But as uncut gems, about 20 gold a piece for 10 of them. So that's 200 gold there. I will relay that to everybody uh, okay. that, uh, that I know my stuff when it comes to treasure. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, there's also a, a very fine set of ivory rat snake dice. Rat snake is the the game of the populace. It's a gambling mm. game with dice, uh, worth mm. about ten gold uh, for these fine ivory dice. And then a spell book. Uh, let's go ahead and record mm -hmm. it. So it has three spells um, as well as the formula uh, for the or the recipe for the uh, the potions that. Uh, shrink and grow oh that's nice. fantastic Ooh. yeah but they all do rely on that cage so it's a proximal thing it pretty much only works in this house or if you bring the cage around with you it hmm. will work it'd be done yep uh so the tome contains three spells they're random so we'll roll whenever our mage gets back and a bunch of scrolls that are just uh basically the mage's mundane diary talking about how he met strange rat people and how he has been doing business with them. He actually uh, details this huge plot where he had been blackmailing a lot of the lords of uh, Lake Mar because he learned certain things from their household by these mouse spies. Uh, good indication by reading through the notes that uh, one of the lords figured out what was going on and had him killed. <laughs> Ooh. Oops. Yeah, spicy. Mm -hmm. Medium oops. <clears throat> so you have treasure. You have a base of operations. So you have a good nest egg to start. If you guys go to the top of the screen and go to the your neighborhood map, mm -hmm. this will uh, kick off the next adventure here. And I've got a little pin in the top right where it says the party. You're that little house at the cold. I can't at see the it. End. Can't see it. Can anybody see it? No. no. Ah, okay. I think it popped up with a thing saying I didn't own a token. Oh. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Uh, do I have to drop a token on the screen? Is that how that works? Uh, if you right-click on it, if you're just wanting to reveal everything, 
uh, right click on your neighborhood up top, you can change the viewer permission boxes. Configure. And then accessibility, it says all players. Uh, it's kind of scroll down a little further. I don't remember what they're called. Uh, there's two check boxes, I think, that have something to do with vision. Token vision. Okay. Oh, I don't want to restrict vision. I see. I see. Yeah. Sorry, I don't use this very much as a VTT. So there we go. Ah, there it is. All right. So your your house is in the cul-de-sac over there. Okay. Neat. Next to the giant rat god. Yes, the shrine of the rat god is is in your city block, in fact. Okay, uh, so guys, let's go ahead and do our carousing between adventures. So this is how you get your luck back that you spent. You got a nest egg now, so you guys can kind of talk about what the future of your group is going to be. You got a base of operations. So you don't have to pay rent anymore, outrageous rent. Uh, but you do have taxes uh, oh, dang it! <laughs> yeah, <Ooh. laughs> that that need to be paid. So there needs to be some income coming in. So let's start with Chuck. Uh, Chuck, are you? Uh, do you want to roll in the carousing table? If you're not am, down any luck. I am actually up on luck. Okay. I got thirteen out of eleven, but yeah, I want to. I want to carouse. You want to roll? Okay. So your choice as to what die size you want to roll. The biggest one. The D twenty. Okay. I got a four. A four, a four. Okay, so uh, roll a d6. Uh, yeah. Got a one. And that's how much luck you get back. If you're down any, take it. If you're at full, take it as fleeting luck. Okay. I'll give it to you as fleeting. Okay, so what happens in the next few weeks after you guys are just taking stock of you know, there was, I, I did, I'd said there was some nice furniture in this place that you guys could spiffy up or you could sell off if you want. But it's been a week since your acquiring of the house and getting to know the neighborhood. Uh, but during this time, uh, with your money in your pockets flush with cash, uh, Chuck, you, uh, you get apprehended for public drunkenness. That sounds right. You escape, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Uh, but at the cost of any wealth in gear you were carrying at the time. Okay, so we'll figure that in a second. But roll a d4 and let's see how bad your offense was. I hope it's a four. Uh, it's only a one. A one. Okay, the watch publicly mocks you when they encounter you on the streets. Oh, look at that. It's, uh, what's your character's name again? Kurt. Kurt is old Kurt Moonshine because you were caught with your pants <laughs> off running down the streets. <laughs> oh, boys, it's another full moon tonight. <laughs> Couple of Christmas hams on that boy. Exactly. Uh, so forevermore to the to the neighbor, uh, the neighborhood watch group, they they will mock you relentlessly. Okay. There we go. That's not bad. That's not too bad. Uh, Jeremy. It's kind of okay. You're not. Yeah. You're no longer having to not uh, kill living beings. That's gone now. But let's see what happens to you. Do you do you want to roll? I mean, I'm also up on luck. Okay, so you would you would take it as fleeting. But, but yeah, you don't have to roll. <laughs> I shouldn't, but it's kind of more fun to. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So. Now, now Kurg still has to deal with. Uh, Kind of stolen his uh, one of his uh, rivals' girls. Uh, yeah. mm. That's a little. It's a little dangerous. Maybe that's why it's spicy. Who knows? Yeah, uh, but so that Jeremy, makes it more fun. Yeah. So you're gonna you gonna roll, Jeremy? What do you, what die size do you want to go with? What's the biggest die you can go with? D twenty. I'm gonna roll a D twenty. Why the hell wouldn't I? <laughs> a two. All right. Roll a D four. D four. Okay. D four. Okay, four fleeting luck. Mark that okay. down. And you're going to begin the next adventure with a legendary hangover. Uh, mm -hmm. Minus one D to all actions until you drink uh, heavily. You're also broke. Oh, no. <laughs> so after we figure out the disposition of what you do with all that gold, you have none. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. Sounds all right. about right. Yeah, yeah. Some ugly... How about yourself? Well, I forgot that I had eight fleeting luck, so 
<laughs> adjustment. I'm uh, I'm actually sitting at two fleeting luck, but I will roll for more. Okay. What die size do you want to go with? Uh, 20. One of us has to get something bad. Come on. 12. 12. Okay. Uh, roll 3d4. Ooh. Mm. 11. That's a lot of fleeting luck. Take that much. Oh, my goodness. All right. And uh, 12 is what you rolled, right? Yep. Okay, uh, roll for me a d5. Okay. Five. Okay, so a long-forgotten face showed up in town last night. Um, it is a youth claiming that you're his father. Jeez. Mm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> You've been going so, to the, uh, the we will we will now. turn that into story into the story. His name is uh uh Pepe Luftwidge. <laughs> and he claims that a liaison you had with the bar winch. Uh a, <laughs> where is your character from? Which is nationality? Lake Mar. Lake from Lake Mar, okay. Uh, <laughs> that he was conceived from the fruits of your loin, and he come, he's come to claim uh, his birthright as a uh, word about the uh, the city area that you guys are in now is that you've come upon a small fortune. Now, you know, truthfully, he does look a little bit like ugly, which is it's, unfortunate. It's yeah, unmistakable. Unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eddie, are you rolling or not? Uh yeah yeah I'll roll okay die size I'll I'll go big I'll go twenty all right everybody's going big fourteen, 14. okay so if we roll a d fourteen ten ten, ten luck uh, fill up the luck that you're you're out and then uh, take the rest as fleeting okay and a fourteen uh roll me d five. A one. A one. So apparently you were out carousing the same night with Chuck's character because uh, that next morning, while not apprehended by the police, you did wake up naked. Uh, Sounds like something I'd do. And the overlord's pleasure did. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully I built some goodwill. <laughs> I put some mice people in their house. Spry <laughs> on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, I smuggled exactly them in. How this transpired, <laughs> um, and this is definitely a uh, a, a place where people are displayed while they go about their <laughs> their events. Um, Aha! I'm a so performer. You wake up, sand <laughs> a theater, if as, you will. Uh, and the janitors are basically cleaning up from the night's festivities. They're like, oh, this one's finally awake. Can you cover yourself <laughs> up, son? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say to start a morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll look at him knowing full well I'm not wearing any clothing going, you got anything that can get these stains out? <laughs> <laughs> he tosses you a, a, a wine skin. It's like, just pour it on and light it. It's the best we can do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll open it and give it a sniff, kind of put the cork back in it. Do High I potency. find my clothes anywhere nearby? No. no. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, let me ask you a question. In this room or in this place I find myself, is there like a set of curtains or something I can throw around me? <laughs> <laughs> There's a bearskin rug on the floor that you drape yourself with and you do the walk of shame back to your neighbor. <laughs> oh. oh, Bert, there is not an ounce of shame in it. I'm walking with my head high. I'm I, In my mind, I'm a conqueror wearing a bearskin rug. <laughs> The parents are like quickly the covering the eyes of all the children in the streets as they <laughs> avert their eyes. As I walk by and wave, hey kids! <laughs> I hope that exact attitude. <laughs> uh. All right, Dan, you're the last. Are you going to carouse and get some luck back or are you good? Let's see if I get a little luck back. Okay. What size die? Uh, let's go with a D20. 
Oh, well, okay. Give it a roll. A one. You did, you, I did it, guys. Yeah, again. So roll a D3. <laughs> Pull up my keyboard so I can roll something this low. Oh, hey, three luck back. And again, miraculously, average Dan is average. Nothing happens. <laughs> hey, you got three luck. Yeah. For no cost. And I got a bearskin rug for the house. It changes nothing. I have 18 luck. Oh, I well, nothing. oh nice. Oh, you right, want to so wear can, the rug? You can fill back up to your, your Lux normal uh, level. Can't go over, so everything over turns into fleeting luck. Okay? Perfect. Sorry. All right. So, Three in this neighborhood, luck, I guess. Yeah, in this neighborhood that you're in, uh, it's not actually, despite some of the names of place, like you're on Squalor Road in the spillway or some of the names of the streets, uh, it's a it's a mix of some a little bit more well to do shops and storefronts, uh, along with some not so nice back alleys and dens of uh, well, you know, just crime. You're sure just crime ridden. During this time, though, you've kind of struck up uh, something of a passing friendship with uh, the gang. So not not thieves guild oriented. That's that's far too high up. So the gang that kind of runs the streets here, and they're in the protection racket. Of the familia. So how do you guys deal with it? Because probably the first day that you uh, that you guys oh kind of open up and you're airing the place out, you're setting it up. Now, and I also remember you're you're in you're out of the way in this little cul de sac, but everything around you are pretty much shops. So someone's going to come and visit you basically explain to you how how things go down and he, it's not like a hard sell he's not shaking you down he's just like well you know these streets they can get pretty bad if you're opening a new shop here let me tell you the boys and i can just make sure that uh, the thieves stay away from you you know and just take the bare minimum amount that the thieves guild or you, you know how it is and you just pay us a small little tithe every month or so just a where small is this conversation amount. taking place probably Switched. right out the front door should I we invite show them, them in <laughs> them, like the 20 silver daggers that we have i'm sorry what was that we've name? got like 20 silver daggers oh no, we only had like one. Oh no we stole oh, no. a bunch from the island yeah we yep. sure did yeah yeah i'm not kidding we've got like 20 of them yeah which is kind of like the badge of office for the thieves guild mm. in town mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um Right, so so you you do the whole shrinking thing. So this is early in the week, right? So uh, like, so how? Just just let me know. How does this play off? Do you you guys have a laugh and you kind of uh, get to know the local gang, or do you quickly make them enemies? How does this shake out? Like maybe we shrink them, like kind of show them the show them the, show them the daggers, mm -hmm. them shrink, see the daggers, but then play it nice after that. Yeah, I would kind of like, like to give them a scare, but, uh, yeah, I'd like yeah, to make cool. friends with them. I mean, you know, yeah, absolutely, they might be I, able we to can kick be cool with them, away. but like, like, let's one up them. Yeah, exactly. Yes, we can we'll mess be with cool. them twice as bad. <laughs> but the first note is letting them know, don't mess with these people. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you're not paying, uh, but you're also not going to be adversarial to them. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So no. let, let maybe let them know that you know there's a, there's a chance that we might also be able to get. You know, uh, we, we might also be a source of information they can trade with. One. Because information is important. Three, four. You know. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we're also down for work, too. I mean, we're capable. We can do stuff. That's right. We can okay. beat stuff to death easy, and we can thieve things. Sure. So you're kind of seen as kind of a gang lords to your own right in the neighborhood they they leave you alone you know you're 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 firm about not paying but you're also not necessarily disrespectful so you've got an easy truce they don't come near you guys you know you you trade a little information here and there with them as well so you're we'll say you're on pretty good standing with them so this is uh after uh chuck your character comes back <laughs> having your outing in the night, having yeah. lost your pocket money. Um, well, let's, before we do that, let's talk about 
what are you guys going to do after having the the place set up? You've got a little bit of a nest egg, uh, but it won't last long, especially with taxes mm-hmm. coming due. What are you guys going to do in this thriving cesspit of a city? <laughs> I'm apparently an entertainer of sorts, so. <laughs> At least for a one-night engagement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No idea how you got there. <laughs> I am Just not. walking down the street naked, covered in scratches and bruises from a cat fight. <laughs> <laughs> on a bear rug. Wearing a bear <laughs> rug. <laughs> and somehow <laughs> singing happened? a tune and happy about it. <laughs> yeah. I want to smuggle weird guy. some material inside of cakes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was going to play dice and just show off my dice. However, I could be a bakery. We could open a bakery. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) It keeps the rats happy. And then we use the rats to kind of help give us inside information. So does anybody have uh, the occupation of being a baker before this happened? Mm -hmm. Jeremy does. Montgomery. Uh, Montgomery does. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you what, Montgomery. Uh, if you want to open the place up, I mean, you're going to require some funds to be to get the stuff that you need. You're mm-hmm. going to have to have a uh, you know uh, an actual oven put in. Might take a little work. Yeah. So yeah. here's how I'm going to do it. Um, why don't you? You have an intelligence bonus. Uh, no, let me hop back to there. No, you don't need no money. negative, fine. but no bonus. Okay, that that's fine. That's fine. So you give basically. Oh, I'm going to need these kind of things. Um, you know, you know your trade uh, but with no bonus. You 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 don't know the cheapest mm-hmm. way to go about it. But you're like, I need these things. Who's the money man of the group? Who is the person doing the purchasing? Who's the person like controlling the purse strings? I would vote for Joe, but Joe's not here. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I'll I'll second that. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's say let's say let's say the, that smart Joe one is the money man then. Yeah. Uh, but him not being here let's have oh i'll I'll do random d5 okay jeremy you're going to be making the rules for this let's see how much uh let's see how much it's going to cost you to get everything set up uh roll me 2d10 okay no modifier uh, because you can't. Uh, your your character uh, doesn't have a bonus in intelligence or or a negative. Okay, so not bad, not bad. It's going to be seventy gold to get what you need set up, to get all the paperwork filed with uh, the town so that you can you can sell confectionery goods. Uh, you're going to have to get a sign painted up to put out in front of your place, and of course, the biggest expense is to get that oven built in. Mm-hmm. If you guys get this done, just mark off 70 gold from the uh from from your funds there. I got it. How much so was you, Joe's brother's ransom? Hundred and it was not forty nine, right? Ken? But if we can say that they because they just picked him up for not having 149 sick. gold. But yeah. if we are able to sneak <laughs> a knife to him and he can say he always was a member, it doesn't even right. Have to pay the so fine. in which case they won't execute him, but they'll take the hundred and forty nine dollars or hundred and forty nine gold uh, for for the processing. percentage that he should have been paying. <laughs> okay. Well let's let's it's use the rats kind of maybe a... to sneak him the knife and the gold. Uh, yeah, you can do that. So it's more legitimate, not just saying that, hey, he, he forgot this. He is, <laughs> he's a mm-hmm. dagger-carrying member of the guild. <laughs> it was there all along. All right. So if you want to pay does. off that debt, then that's fine. He'll be a contact you can use within the Thieves Guild now. Okay. All right. Good enough. So business is open. You've been doing all right. Uh, word hasn't gotten out too much yet i mean you're you're at the break even point for a new business that's not horrible but um you know after a couple of weeks of this your clientele isn't really going up you're not sure how things are going to work out you got the money for the taxes coming up but you know you're probably all getting a little antsy at this point a little bored <laughs> a little bored um business is doing okay but uh rise it or reese it is the uh, young man who came to shake you down that first day that you, you know, you, you got him shrunk down and had a good laugh at his expense. He comes into your bakery and he puts in a fairly large order, uh, pays up front in uh, silver coin. It tells you, look, uh, 
you know, he looks a little nervous. He's scratching his face, scratching his arms. Uh, it's like, yeah, um, uh, I'm gonna need uh, gonna need these delivered tonight uh, down at the Grindstone. Grindstone is one of those, you know, not so reputable bars that you know that uh, his gang. That's kind of like their hangout. You you show up there for trouble. Look, uh, no, no, look, uh, the king, they, they, they call their leader the king, uh, just wants to have a little chat with you, you know, a little one-on-one. I think he's got a job he wants to hire you for. And, uh, you know, just to sweeten the deal, we're going to buy these muffins here. You've got great muffins. I mean, can we get some more of those with the, you know, the things on top that will spring? Yeah, those. Yeah. At least a dozen of those. Uh, and you know uh, we're we're having a little problem. Well, it's not a problem. It's like an endeavor. We want to want to kind of expand. You know, this neighborhood's all right and all, but uh, it's only so much we can ext- uh, charge the businesses for our services. So we want to expand out a little bit. And next, you know, a couple more blocks around us and all. And uh, well, the king he's got uh, he's got this plan. You see, and uh, it would be really useful to have some uh, non-affiliated folks like yourselves. You know, and he, I, I, he's looking around. It's like, you got a nice place here. Business looks like it's been, it's okay, right? It's okay. Not great, but it's okay. We're in. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure you could use a little bit more profit. It's business. Or goal, a little bit more business. We are mm-hmm. so in. Go, sell, them, sell them the baked goods and tell them we'll think about it. We'll show up <laughs> if we feel like it. Oh, no, we're in. We're doing this. <laughs> I think we should consult the rats and see what they know about this guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, what are they going to tell us? He's a shitty dude. No, let's take a job, man. Let's get paid. Let's do no, something. I'm, I'm bored as. I'm all for taking. Or, I'm all for board. taking a job, but but we play it cool. Okay. He's listening to you guys argue with each other like out loud. He's like, yeah, and it's okay. <laughs> you know, we know you're cool. You don't have to play cool. We know you're cool. And uh, yeah, so when we turn and look at him, we're like, "Son, we know we're cool. Stay out of this, <laughs> and then just keep arguing." This isn't about how you think about us; it's about how we think about us. The blue icing, Mister Mor- Morcock. The, the blue icing. Yeah, that's the one. Blues where it's at for you. Okay. <laughs> look, I just want to get away from Pepe for a goddamn week. I'm fine with doing this job. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> your your son has been around learning the trade. He's really awful. Oh, bring him along then. No, <laughs> no. Let him see Wink. the world for what it really is, and you know, bring your kid to work day. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, that's actually a good idea. All right, bring your own Such good the people. Day. Yeah, <laughs> Drown bring your mistakes and... day. <laughs> it's career your day, down. kid. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So he just said, you know, uh, show up at the, uh, the, you know, he'll buy all these now. And if you'll deliver more of the same this evening for our little get together, you know, and he prepays for it. Uh, yeah. And if you hang around afterwards, King would like to have a chat with you. Um, I'm sure it would be exciting. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Places sure. coming together. Yeah. Cool. Well, we'll see you tonight. Yep. Or know. not. <laughs> or not. Or not. Or not. Yeah. That'll be up. We're not. That'll be up to us. Yeah. So his gang is called the Knife Twisters. Uh, they are uh, your local, your friendly local gang. Yeah. All right. Portion, little bit of protection racket. They do a uh, little bit of gambling here and there. You're pretty sure that the beggars that are around are part of their organization as well. They don't hide it very much. Uh, but, you know, we're begging on the side. They get all the uh, the shoppers that come out this way. People that live here don't, you know, they know better. <laughs> Not only does that guy got two perfectly good working legs, I happen to know he's got four legs. <laughs> Freaking liar. <laughs> all right. That's too, too many. but only two of them work yeah so yeah so you've got you know the rest of the day you uh, business goes until probably close to sundown uh before you kill the ovens uh so you probably hang out the sign that says close tomorrow because otherwise you got to get up real early to knead the dough and do all the stuff that has to happen for a bakery to run the next day uh anything you want to do you got a little bit of time but it's before you after you close and before the meeting 
I'm going to, I, I'm going to suggest something. Do we want to go, I mean, this, I don't know that we need to decide this now, but do we want to go kind of like, uh, I, I don't know, the demon butcher of Fleet Street with this bakery? Do we want to be making meat pies instead of, uh, I, I mean, you know, with so much meat. eats, you sell sweet meats. With so Anything many reputable people around. Yeah, with so, so, with so many people around, meat. somebody's going to have stuff needs to get be gotten rid of. So I, 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 I think know. we can be versatile. I don't think we have to limit ourselves to that. I think I think that's one service that you can hire. Uh, yeah. <laughs> could be regular meat. Could yeah. be There's a very meat. specific selection on the menu or, that you, you may know, not maybe want Maybe you need order. a package <laughs> delivered somewhere, but you can't really deliver that package. So you send a cake <laughs> instead that has the package inside of it. I like it. Yeah, ex- I like extra it. Extra powdered donuts. So, yeah. Yeah. Is the name extra of your place donuts. like Keistered Confectionaries or something like you know? The prison pocket? <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's it oh, what are you gonna man. pick uh, I sup- prison pocket that's i suppose the only thing i would want to do since i lost everything Sweet meats and hidden while delights. running naked is probably go hit up a shop or two to buy some replacement gear all right yeah mark it mm-hmm. out of the uh yeah. <laughs> the shop's funds <laughs> yeah post them sockets Yep. Same thing as Eddie's character. <clears throat> he, was, he woke up oh. naked with none of his gear. So. <clears throat> All right. I do still own a small riverboat somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. It's landlocked now, but somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's my it's my old uh my old tree house, my old fort. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so anything you want to do to prepare, uh, you know, so on the map there, it's actually listed. Uh, let's see. The grind house. Uh, maybe your characters are covering it over. There it is. One, one. Right there. Or the grindstone. Oops. Did not mean to do that. All right. Anything you guys want to do beforehand or just head over when the time comes? Let's just keep going on mistakes. <laughs> you know, do we want to bring, do we want to hide anything in any of the, uh, any of the baked goods we bring over? Uh, I would vote no. We right, don't have enough. anything to hide in it. I'm just throwing out spicy ideas. I don't care where they lead. Like hiding things is for people who need to hide things. <laughs> yeah, it's we can hide. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys march on over. So the narrow alley ends at a decrepit wooden door hung on leather hinges. Above, uh, there's rusty knives, cleavers, and daggers hanging like like a macabre mobile <laughs> from uh, from the the roof. Uh, uh, awning and they just kind of twist and spin slowly in the night air uh, as you come does in it, uh sorry go ahead i was just gonna say does it look like they need them <laughs> hey oh, free no. knives <laughs> so you go to open the door and uh it's locked uh you rattle it a little bit and then somebody from the inside throws a bolt and he's like we're closed for the night private meeting Oh, oh, it's you lot. Did, did, did you bring the cupcakes? Those Bavarian creams are all... Oh, mm, With the blue frosting. The blue frosting. Yeah, you know, it's only one guy here who likes the blue frosting. I did he? Oh, man. It's okay. I, I've, I've got, got a second bag with an assortment. Ones. We we brought this bag for you and this bag for us, but you know what? Sharing's caring. Oh, come in, come in. The king will be with us shortly. You come I mean, in like, and uh, we're they, checking the boxes, man. <laughs> they've pushed all the tables and chairs out of the way so that, uh, like, there's just a central open area. All the lantern lights turned down real low, so from the outside, definitely looks like it's closed. And uh, there's kind of a, a perverse kind of throne that's kind of put together. It's uh, well, it, it's just 
kind of made out of crates and barrels that's covered with a patchwork quilt of skins. Skins from cats, dogs, rats, just kind of all tapestried together and draped over these crates and barrels. And uh, right now, just kind of uh, having, there's, there's a, a tapped keg, some very weak beer is just being handed out. And the guy says, we got, we got the cupcakes and muffin. Everybody runs over. It's like, oh, no, boy. <laughs> and just starts digging into to your pastries. Uh, you see your contact grabs his, his, uh, his blue confectionery and goes off to the corner. And with uh, the sound of like just really anemic trumpet flares, a grossly fat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this this grossly fat man just waddles up to the throne, rolls a flab just coming out from underneath his like really grease stained shirt, and he just pff, drops himself right onto the throne. And uh, Into is this uh, guy you've seen begging on the corner a few times, but tonight he's dressed up in like a fool's motley, and uh, he goes to reach. For one of the cupcakes, the king slaps him and points at you guys, and uh, he clears his throat. <clears throat> Presenting his sagious and despotively, despotively majestic, awful most of height ty- ty- tyrants, <clears throat> grand overlord of thieves. Can we say that there is a thief? Grand overlord of thieves, ranks and knaves, the cruel, the unforgiving, the magnificent King Corvul. <laughs> he coughs. I huh? uh, just kind of bows down. The guy, well, son, go kiss his feet. Dicks it. He's like Corval, me and the king of this neighborhood. The guy we brought snacks to. You mean my minion? Do I? Yeah. <laughs> he's in the corner. Thumbs up. Who else is covered we need? in blue yeah, frosting? <laughs> We've asked you to court tonight to ask for a mutual beneficial contract of sorts. Strokes right a on. very greasy beard. So like the room is just, there's just a circle of people eating your confectionaries, you know, your, your usual conglomeration of cutthroats, rakes, and ne'er-do-wells. A uh, few people you've definitely seen out begging now and then, uh, looking fine with all their lesions and sores, just wiped off and looking normal. Hey, mm-hmm. We had to survive a whole island of being hunting. Yeah. Get here. Oh, so, yeah. as I'm saying, uh, we we the seed that your group has power and strength in the neighborhood, and we've left you alone to to your growing business, and uh, we applaud your strength and your delicacies. Of course, so good, so good. Oh, more more dog in the the pot pies, though I think. It's not whatnot. Mm. Rat and cat is all fine and good, but dog, dog's where it's at. Mm. Oh, well, but as I was saying, uh, my empire is is a bit too close, too form-fitting, not large enough for my bulk, my majesty. It's time to grow, to push out into other neighborhoods, and for that... We need help. We need mercenaries. We need you. All right. What's the uh, what's the rub? Well, there are two other gangs in the surrounding neighborhoods that we need to eliminate or bring into the fold. Of course, my merry gang here, the Knife Twisters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Round of cheers. To our south, the uh, the Pimp Street Scuttlers, and of course, the magnificently, uh, <laughs> he just kind of goes off in the middle distance for a minute. Oh, yes, the, <clears throat> the 40 Owlets to the north. We will have to contend with each of these, but for you, for you, I'd like 
I'd like you to interrupt the business of the scuttlers to the south. Interrupt their parcel deliveries. Take monies from them. Make sure that their enterprises never uh, amount to much. Is that more important than anything else? I mean, I wouldn't be against having a, an update to our own delivering network. Yeah, take them over if you will. The franchise. Yeah. Yes, but uh, we need a certain amount of disruption. We don't want anyone murdered or any permanent solution. Not until we figured out exactly how the structures all work and what deals they've cut with other neighborhoods, you see. Seems like mm. one kind of nice. Oh, I'm sorry. What was that, Dan? You want it kind of nice? I think more chaos than blood. Yeah. No, yeah. no yeah, murder. That's what I mean. Like, they want it kind of nice. It's like, mm. hey, no, we want them to lose money. We want them, they want them to, to be low on funds, to, to need a friend yeah. to come to. Dead right. people don't feel hurt. That's true. So, you said they're called the Scuttlers? The Pimp Street Scuttlers. <laughs> But there's actually a street called Pimp Street. So that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, make it hard for them to do business. Make it so they have to reach out for <laughs> a friendly hand. <laughs> he he this is just uh, feeling very clever about himself. So, um, what's our take on this? Are we getting paid? Well, of course, everything you intercept is yours to take from their group. Uh, but uh, I was thinking, as we are not necessary rival powers, we we see and uh, admire your skills, of course. But uh, if this neighborhood expands, your neighborhood expands. It opens up to more business all around. Hmm. Okay. So we do business to do business. Takes money to make money. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. What that one says. Well, uh, yeah, I do business against our business. Who's doing business against us? Yeah, actually, you really don't know. I mean, you yeah. thought you'd be doing more business than you have been so far. That is true. All right. Hmm. What? So I asked you're not going to do, with... don't do business against our business, right? Yeah. Kind of oh, we certainly aren't way. going to the confectionery business. No, no, no. We're we're more of the, uh, you know, the, the the protection end of things. A bit of gambling here and there. The begging. We've got we've got the uh, the alms thing down. You know, that's that's kind of our that's our gig. You see, yes, yes. yes. So really work on my red frosting, so you can just use it to kind of reapply some of those markings for yourself oh. for a little treat on the go. <laughs> I mean, little sugar hit midday. Exactly. I'm so, do we have an understanding? You make it difficult for the scuttlers to do business. Take whatever you'd like from them, uh, but it needs to be uh, clear that it's not uh, it's not the knives that are behind this. Of course, we need independent contractors. I'm cool with this. Mm -hmm. all thing. In return. Uh, access to our networks uh you will expand with us new territories i'm down and it's all about yeah. expanding his criminal holdings aren't you son i'll put an arm we're around. growing you're growing dad who is this outrageously fat man and why does he like keep sound so normal, smart son. but act so dumb son keep your mouth shut and learn <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah you know how in some places asking questions will get you arrested? Well, <laughs> you're asking questions will get you killed. <laughs> Kid, keep it zipped. This is what's called a pro gamer move. <laughs> <laughs> Have you considered pressing the X button recently? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's right, all Dad. he's pressing is doubt, doubt, doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Do you accept the mission? Hmm. Yeah. X. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, ah, 
Well, we have to have wine to seal the deal. And he snaps his fingers. About. They bring out a wine cask that's tapped, and he has these big goblets that he pours out to you guys and himself. Oh, says, God. God. To I'm our so business like venture. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. You just dip it in the barrel, coming out <laughs> with it. Uh, to our business ventures in the future conquest of the neighborhoods. Yeah, here's the future. Down it goes. Yeah, it's it's passable wine. <laughs> to <laughs> business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Maybe we can uh, give this one. Jeremy, maybe you're... we can get some of this wine from them for the uh, for the rats. Yep. Who uh, who woke up drunk? That was your character, right, Jeremy? That was me. Right. Yeah. So oh, if you, you stay go. and yeah. party with them tonight, that will wipe out your your negative modifier. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, it just becomes a party after that, uh, where your confections are the 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 meal for the evening, and they provide the booze. I like this group. Yep. Yeah. Anything you guys want to do while uh, you just party the night away? Just party the I, night away. I think um, somebody actually brought up a fun conversation point earlier. Mm -hmm. Do they know? My not heard asking these guys. Do you know anything about a group that takes people to an island and hunts them? Um, I tell you what. Uh, make me a. Oh, this is probably going to be just a tiny part of me that yeah. eventually would like to go back and find those bastards. Maybe I mean, personality yeah. check. We sure know about a group who do that. We killed most of them. Yeah, but I'm them. curious, like, who's behind them? Like, oh, yeah, like bigger, bigger organization. Yeah, there's that little bit of pettiness that every now and then daydreams. I'm already sure. drunk before I ask that question. Uh, seven. Okay, so you're, um, you know, while they're parting with you and their king has just made this uh, this deal with you, they're not they're not quite sure if they can trust you yet. You know, kind of mm -hmm. it's every thief for themselves. Uh, they tell you just you you learn a little enough to know that yeah, there's actually a society of gentlemen uh, that pay handsomely to those who trade in uh, you know the flesh business to acquire them healthy individuals to hunt on private islands. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's that's the most that you get that there is a, a society of noble gentlemen that pay good money for healthy healthy things to hunt <laughs> my new life mission i'm gonna cater weddings or maybe like a sweet 16 where i kidnap one of their daughters and put her on an island jerks <laughs> <laughs> no 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 jeremy i've got a much much better plot for you we're gonna let you bake the cake and we're gonna put the shrinking potion in it <laughs> <Get the cat. laughs> for a little while then we're just gonna quietly gather our things walk out the door and go oh hey have you met our cat and close the door <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll be gone for just a little bit okay this is good Yep. Just enough to enjoy it. I like uh, so it'll cause some chaos. I'll, I'll be right back. So yeah, so Jeremy, you, uh, your character, Mister Moorcock, finds out uh, just enough to know that it's a known thing that there is a society mm -hmm. of well-heeled gentlemen that pay for hunting privileges. Um, not any more information that this that okay. exists. So anyone else doing any hobnobbing, trying to find any, out any other information nah. other than just getting drunk? Just nah. getting drunk, having fun. I'm going to try and find out a little bit more about where I was that night um, when I picked up my bearskin rug. Hmm. All right, make me a personality check. I, I would mind probing a little bit. Okay. Same thing. Make me a personality check. Oh, no. Steve with the big 14. Uh, so what are you asking about? <clears throat> Just, you know, who, who was... Uh, who got us there, you know? Who's responsible for our situation? Um, so, I was, so I'm sorry. So the situation of you being on the island? Yeah. You know. Okay. Yeah, that's actually a decent role. Uh, are you willing to spend one luck to make it a 15? Sure. Okay. Uh, you get a name. You don't know if it's a person's name or a family name. Uh, but uh, one of the things that you know, when you were going through all that, People were asking, were there any 
uh, crests, any 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 distinguishing characteristics, and there wasn't anything like they were. They took great pains to not have. Uh, I know they sealed a bit. Yeah. Uh, but you get a name. Uh, one of the one of the guys that takes in the money from uh, the protection racket tells you that, uh, hey, uh, that sounds a lot like Carson's gig. Hmm. So you got a name. All right. Uh, but you know he's quickly you know and he's just kind of lost in the party. He doesn't want to tell you anymore. He just says, yeah, that sounds like Carson's gig. Uh, Eddie, 16. And what were you asking about? I was asking just for more information about the uh, party night I attended. Um, party night you're more attending. about More about how people end up there and why. Oh. Uh, I don't really remember much. <laughs> usually, uh, people are selected from some of the, uh, the, the more high-end social clubs that are around, some of the, the very nice uh, drinking establishments. Uh, people with unique characteristics are often singled out and uh, asked if they would like to perform for a bit of coin and uh, end up in the the pleasure pits uh, f- with an audience. <laughs> and so, apparently I got carried away enough that I never came home with the coin part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nor do you ever remember going to any really high-end establishments to have been singled out. Boy, where did they pick me up from? That's a question. <laughs> that is a question. Uh, all right. So you guys hop I think I'm a streetwalker now. <laughs> Drinking, talking, some of you. Nobody else wants to ask any questions. Uh, then, you know, you drink till not quite dawn as these are working people. <laughs> Non-reputable jobs, but working people. So they got to get got to get to work in the morning and uh you closed down the bakery because you'd have to gotten up at the crack of dawn or at least mr moorcock would have to start the dough uh mm-hmm. so bakery's closed today got no income coming in from that uh what do you want to do i say we get some nice confectionery goods pawn them off to the rats and ask if they can go dig up some information on the pimp street scuttlers there we go Maybe see if we can get him a little wine, too. Yeah. Doesn't have to be good wine, but, you know, okay wine. Get him a big old Uh jug of wine. There you go. Jug uh, of wine. Some Boone's Farm. Who are you asking? Uh, Who are you asking? Sorry. The rats. Oh, the rats. Okay. Um, Jug of wine. Okay, so if you bribe them with some wine. Some wine uh, and some baked goods, yeah. Why don't you do the roll for this, Chuck? Do me a D20, yeah. and I'll give you a plus two to the roll. D20 plus two. Mm-hmm. I got a seven. A seven. <laughs> <laughs> They're not happy with the wine. It wine. is Boone's Farm. Hmm. Okay, so uh, they drop you a few things. So the Scuttlers also run a protection racket, um, neighborhood to the south. Uh, but they also um, they also run a pit fighting establishment. Okay. And they have some what, connections what, what with the pit? Rat Shrine, which is how your contacts know about them at all. Okay. Is it like a rats versus rats sort of pit fighting, or mm. is it so like? Here, uh, so here's how this adventure is set up for this. So if you want to pursue one of those lines of inquiry, um, you need to bribe this guy. So you got him some wine and everything to get him up here to get that much information. But he he's like, well, uh, so which line of inquiry do you want to go down? I mean, like I'm concerned about Master Splinter fighting Master Splinter here. I think the easiest for us to mess with would be their protection racket. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just being a little facetious yeah. here. Uh, put two gold down. Okay. Put two gold down. And what line of questioning do you want to ask? Him about? Uh, so he's telling you about they have connections with a rat shrine or they're doing something with a rat shrine. Rat shrine. They've got a protection racket going on and then they run pit fight. Uh, pit fights. I want the protection racket. Protection racket, okay. Okay. Um, 
like who's on their routes, what are they paying? Go on. Okay. <clears throat> the master of uh, the ale house known as the Dogfish, uh, Dovrani, uh, is basically he's being uh, extorted out of his establishment. They they take money from him supposedly once a month, but they come by several more times in that. Seems like it's a concentrated effort to just run this guy out. Uh, but other than that, there's several other, it's, it seems like in particular, they hit ale houses and uh, they percentage of the take, right? It's not a flat fee. It's like, how'd you do this month? <laughs> Give us this much. Mm -hmm. But they seem to leave other businesses alone. It seems like they just got a thing against ale houses maybe. And this one guy in particular. He runs the alehouse called the Dogfish. Okay. All right. Cool. So let's go talk to the dude who runs the alehouse, the Dogfish. Mm -hmm. Things they've been doing okay on business. Well, or if we want to interrupt their business, we just torch all the alehouses in their neighborhood. <laughs> Businesses yeah. don't make money, they don't make money. Yeah. Yeah, if they got something to sell, hey, we know a guy who's got some wine. Or <laughs> something that passes for something called wine. <laughs> and then yeah. you know, maybe mm -hmm. when we get over there, see if we can find out something on this pit fighting, find mm -hmm. out who all their fighters are, and maim them. That works. Yep. So yeah. the dogfish is a primary thing because the dogfish is actually located in your neighborhood. Oh. It's right there. Ooh. That shouldn't be happening. That's... Yep. And now the bakery makes sense. I bet those fellas we shrank earlier were members of the scuttlers then. And what, that's why no, we're those were the, the dudes that we shrunk. Are from this, yeah. The knife okay. twisters. They're okay. You made peace with them yeah. after shrinking yeah. them down. Okay. okay. One time. Well, let's head yeah, over to the fun. dogfish. All right. Yeah. You want to head out uh, probably later that afternoon because you're all hungover to start off with. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it It is a nicer establishment than the grindstone, to be sure. Uh, it's freshly cleaned. It looks like the proprietor has takes a lot of care in how his business is portrayed. The dogfish, uh, the tavern sign is the front end of a dog, the rear end of like a mermaid's tail. Uh, it's, you know, been freshly painted recently. Windows are shiny. Uh, they're open for business, but there's just like one lone guy at a table eating a plate of uh, pork and beans and drinking a draft and it's empty otherwise. And this is, you know, kind of late, you know, this is afternoon. A place like this would be, should be selling lunch, should be selling, you know, selling food, you know, whatever's going on here might be why you got your bakery isn't taking off too. There's just the traffic's not here. That should be here. Said Johnson. <laughs> uh, there's man behind the bar. Um, just sitting on a stool, just shining up, just endless rows of uh, of cutlery and uh, glasses, and just sighing heavily. When you come in, he brightens up, he straightens up his uh, his smock, and comes out. Ah, sir, sir, please, please come in. We've got uh, we've got hot meals ready to go. Uh, we've got board today. That sounds fantastic. Get us served up. We got some questions for you. Uh. Well, uh, we serve meat, and our cook is, uh, well, I, he's, he's not fit for the courts, but he's a good cook. Uh, uh, please, by the fireplace, if you'd like. Sure. Well, the one guy who's eating there kind of raises up his beer stein. He's like, I'll, I'll get to you in a minute, Joseph. Uh, let, me, let me get these fine gentlemen settled. You come down. I'm wondering if there's a way for us to disrupt the protection racket while not necessarily taking this guy out of business. Because the more places like this that exist, the more places we can sell our baked goods to to turn around and serve. It's yeah, just it a is. thought. 
Yeah. So he, he brings off. everybody yeah. out a tanker of his ale. It's like, oh, it's made on the premises. Uh, my, That's fantastic. my father's ale house uh, recipe. It's been handed down to me and I uh, make it just like he did. Uh, Sir, here you go. I, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I I don't my 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 daughter's not around. She should be serving you all. It's just me today, but I'll do the best I can. Hey, yeah. no worries, buddy. Why don't you pull up a seat real quick? Uh, he looks around at his obviously empty bar. It's like sure, sure. Sits down. Looks a little nervous. We haven't introduced ourselves. We opened up a bakery a couple blocks from here. And he kind of, oh, thank you, God. For, <laughs> for, I I, for a moment there, I thought you were going to extort me for more protection money. No, no, no. no. Paying two gangs. I can't pay anymore. So you're paying the knife twisters and the scuttlers? Yeah, yes, yes. I mean, like, we can fix that. When do the uh, scuttlers come by to collect? <sighs> now and then, uh, this evening, likely. That's fantastic news. I'll tell you what, we're trying to clean up the neighborhood. We've got a pretty good deal going with the knife twisters. We're going to be here drinking tonight. And when the scuttlers show up to collect, you point them out to us and we'll take care of things. He's, he's thinking about that for a minute. Make me a personality check. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, oh uh, boy yeah, I, have you ever seen scuba steve over here do work probably not i'm gonna have to look that up yeah so yeah so he's uh you want to spend luck on that that that's a hard no at this point do you uh you spend enough to get mm. that to at least a five he's not gonna flat reject you <laughs> i am gonna spend I'm going to spin myself down to nine. Oh, wow. I've got 14. Okay. Ooh. So what is that? Uh, yeah, I'll throw five on there. So I'll make that okay. a seven. Make that a seven. So seven, he's like, oh, look, uh, I don't, I, I got few enough customers as there are. If you start any trouble here tonight, I'll lose even those. Well, we don't want to cause troubles inside your tavern. We want to okay. we want to get them. We want to follow them, and we want to stop them on the street. How do you normally give them money? Like, do you put it in a special envelope? Maybe you don't have that envelope. Maybe you just have like a red uh, purse or something to put it in. He uh, just... he reaches behind him and pulls out one of the wooden steins. It's got their logo kind of burned on the front. He puts it on the counter. And he just puts some coins in it, just like that. Okay. So, so if we just you know. What... You know look for who gets that cup and then we just well just point them oh. out to us yeah we won't cause any trouble here we want uh you know all the other businesses doing good in the neighborhood is good for our business eat some cheesecake <laughs> uh, i mean that's a well, good time. i mean maybe I once certainly sorry go ahead once we get this place turned around who does your baking well, our cook, for what I mean, good hearty loaves, that's about all he bakes. Yeah, We're more we... of a, a meat and potato kind of establishment. Nothing fancy, but if you can make some better bed, bread than cook, then heck yeah. I'm sure we can. Or uh, Montgomery here is it's a fantastic baker. Maybe you could start selling some cakes or sweet pies. Oh, yeah. Maybe we could have some brews where people get stuff, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you like the beer? It's what, what, not what, what if we call it the the bruise cruise? You know, it goes great in bread, beer. Yeah, it pretty much goes great with everything. Yeah. I mean, it's better than that water. I mean, you get diseases from water. Absolutely. We yeah. could even have we could have we could have uh, uh, baked goods made with beer. Mm, okay. Now that's a flavor I can get behind for breakfast. Anyway, right. we'll be here tonight. You just point them out. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, maybe you'll get to meet my daughter. I, I don't know why she's not here today. She should have been here today. She uh oh, that sounds just been missing today. Oh, she goes off. She's gotten in with some uh, unsavory sorts. Kind of hard not to in this neighborhood, I guess. I feel like she's uh, gonna ruin things for us. I don't know. She may need help. Who does she? Well, get? she's got a good head on her shoulder. She just 
she's of that age where she's looking for a little bit more adventure than a, you know, a bar can provide, I suppose. And mm-hmm. Father, that's just a little bit too anxious about her friends. Who uh, she is? She we had a little argument last night. I didn't expect her to be in today, to be honest. Who's she involved with? Oh, just just some fellas from the neighborhood, I suppose. I'll tell you what, once we get this thing with the scholar sorted out, or maybe during you point us out, maybe we can get them straightened out, straightened out too. Oh, if you can do that, I'd be much appreciated. I, I need the help around here if business picks up. Uh, let me get that food for you. Yeah. It goes off. The one lone guy is still working on his, uh, his pork and beans. He's kind of just staring hard at all you guys while he's shoveling food into his mouth. Oh, there's contempt. I'll wheel around. No, no, it's more like appraisal. He's just like he's memorizing your faces, memorizing how you move, how you talk, how you walk. He's paying very close attention to you guys. I'll just turn around. As he serves us meat and beans. No, this is the lone dude sitting in there. This is a lone dude. The other, the one lone customer that was sitting in here too. I'll swivel around like, who do you work for? Just takes his time finishing what he's chewing, wipes off his face. <sighs> takes some coins. You notice there's some gold in it. Puts it on the table. Just walks out the door. Oh, I follow. Him. They're paying you more than I'm willing to pay you. <laughs> Who's doing it? <laughs> I'm gonna follow him out. Uh, okay. You uh like intentionally and openly or oh, you want yeah. to wait a moment no no oh, intentionally. intentionally and openly i'm going for oh, yeah. my joke is way open okay They're paying you way more than i will <laughs> he, he steps into the street and almost immediately there are two town guards who you never see around like when you need them they're never there uh there is immediately two town guards just kind of briskly walking up from uh, uh east and west on the street Wait, run that by me. So like he steps out, he steps out of the dogfish onto that little uh, that little alley right there that goes by Squalor Row. And as soon as he does, there's two town watchmen that are essentially waiting for him that's just walk briskly up to him so that they're on his right and left. Not like they're going to apprehend him, like they're protecting him. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll leave uh, it. They look at you coming out and say, is there a problem, sir? No, Turns it's... around. And he kind of crosses his arms and says, I don't know. Is there a problem here? Well, now that you got guards with you, you're uh, not going to cause trouble for the dogfish, are you? I like Cook's food. I'm here often. I'd like to see, see it stay in business. I heard your conversation. Good luck to you. All right. To you, too. Swing by our bakery sometime. We'll set you up. Bakery? Yeah, we got a bakery. I a couple blocks with from beans, here. do you? Great breads, mm. great sweets, snack cakes. I'll do that. All right. The carriage comes down out of the alley. Black lacquered carriage, yeah. big tall wheels, two horses pulling it. He steps into the carriage, just gives you a nod, and uh, the two guards just kind of wait until he boards and they kind of back to him face to you mm-hmm. until he boards and he's off uh one of the guards walks over to you guys and says uh don't start any trouble for the highborn we don't want that I, we don't want them over here causing problems i agree with you i didn't realize he was highborn i thought he was some street gang dude <sighs> he he's you know the guards actively sweating he wipes it just like no, he's he's some kind of food aficionado. He comes down here. There used to be some great places around here, and there's not, not many left. Dogfish is one of them. You know what's going on? Is it just gangs running them out? Yeah, I mean, we know about the gangs. There's not a lot we can do about them. Um, got no official charters or guilds that we can speak to to kind of keep it down low enough that folks can do business but it's not just that um a lot of the businesses are just targeted made to go under it's it's not the gang specifically we'll turn that around 
if it's not the gang specifically any thoughts on that hmm uh I hate to ask chuck your character is uh mouthing off a lot smarter than he might be but give oh, me yeah. a personality role oh yeah <laughs> uh, i got a nine all right um all right so that comes out a little less intelligent yeah than yeah that's otherwise. fair otherwise it's like well i don't know could have to do with the property could have to do with just the location i understand that some nobles wanted to put in some establishments just down this way but we've got a lot of old families here they've got uh generational claim to buildings plots of land i don't know might have something to do with that i, I that's a rumor i will turn it around okay well hey sorry to make you sweat there so you guys have the new bakery yeah. at the end of the street. Yeah. You know, there used to be a potions guy who sold Crazy snake oil mage. themselves. Yeah. yeah, used to live there. Yeah. Yeah, he pulls, off, he pulls shit. off his helmet. You know, he's, he's sweating a little bit. It's like, you know, I was there when they pulled out what was left of his body. Yeah. Do what now? What you want? How well, bad was, was it? I had rat bites on him, huge chunks of pieces of a missing... Somebody had hollowed him out, just cut him open from crotch to throat, and just all of his innards were gone. And uh, I guess what was left over got eaten by rats. Yikes. Mess. Rats. Somebody was trying to send a message. Never yeah. It was very uh, clear on what that message was. We, uh, going through it, we found some shit here and there that might have to tie in with that. And uh, luckily, we're not in the same field of business as he is. So. Also, we're not dead. Hmm. Oh. Good luck to you, I guess. All right. Yeah, if we can do something to bring uh, foot traffic back, you might do a little bit better than you have. I mean, I, I'm just now hearing about you. How long have you been open? A couple weeks. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Since yeah. That's bad. Last, <laughs> since we last got attempted to be murdered. Oh, that's true, I guess. Uh, maybe that's what's keeping folks away, you know? It was a pretty gruesome scene. I mean, uh, he was cleared out of there, and there's been some tales in the neighborhood about uh, uh, thieves that have gone in there trying to steal furniture and whatnot and not coming back out. Yeah. Who cares about furniture? That was almost but... us. <laughs> I'm glad it worked out then. All right. You all have a good one. Around town, you know, swing in, get some, uh, yep. get some. He tips good. his helmet to you and uh, Ice walks and off. Pastries. So, not a lot going on tonight. I was just ending up uh, our last module, doing the setup for this next one. Sorry, there was not a lot of action involved there, but lots of setup. Uh, we'll go into this next one next time, I guess, uh, yeah. as we're just a few minutes away from time. Uh, Chuck, anything you got there for the Defenders you want to announce? Yeah, over on twitch.tv slash Defenders of Cobalt, you can uh, check us out this Wednesday, 9 p.m. Central. We're going to be doing some Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Uh, Friday, swing by at 10 p.m. Central. We're going to be doing some Shadowrun. Uh, and then next Saturday, I think we've got some 5th Ed D&D at 1 p.m. And then we've got the Darkest House at 9 p.m. So... Lots of stuff. Cool. Yeah. Jeremy, you want to plug anything for the Plutecast? Anything at the moment. I appreciate it, though. Yeah, very good. Anyone else? Just you. Yeah. Check out our Discord. There you go. Yes, the Discord is all kinds of fun stuff. Particularly check out the frog meme page or section. Also fun. Yeah. Uh, check out my own stream at uh, twitch.tv slash steamstealmurder. We... Go ahead and stream on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. This Sunday is Gamma World 2nd Edition. Should be a lot of fun. Tuesdays is 1st Edition Dungeons & Dragons. Friday, BX Dungeons & Dragons. A lot of classic games getting played. And uh, yeah, check out the podcast at bluemagic, B-L-U-M-A-G-I-K dot com. Take us away, Chuck. All right. Let's find the right buttons to take us away. <laughs> Push the buttons. Do, do the things. Push yes. the buttons. Kill the viewers. <laughs> I mean, no, no, not that. Kill, not kill that. the stream. <laughs> <laughs> mm.